All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are here for another story of hope. And all the stories are so great and beautiful and important. Um, what I especially love about Jenna's story is that we are now um, on baby number two since her work <laughs> began with um, me and my team back in 2021, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Jenna, why don't you start with kind of like what brought you to, to us and, and your process before starting your work with um, myself and my team? Okay. So um, I actually first found Amy through a skincare podcast called Forever 35. And I think it was in 2019. I could have the year wrong in the summer. And so I started following Amy because of that before my husband and I were really contemplating starting the family. Um, and so I actually went off of birth control in August of 2019, but that fall I had some pelvic floor issues that delayed our process of starting to try. Um, so then really we consider, we started trying in February or March of 2020, just in time for COVID and the world to shut down. So, um, it was a very anxious time for everyone. We are both in oil and gas. And in March of 2020, oil prices dropped to negative 35, which has literally never happened. So we both had no idea if we had job security or not. That year was crazy for us. Um, so we started trying in February, March of 2020. And then by that summer, I had a follow-up because the pelvic floor issues were possibly an OB issue. So I had to follow up with my OB that summer to kind of talk about everything and where I was at with that. Um, and I mentioned to him that we'd been trying since February. And he told me that, I guess I should say I was um, 31 at the time. 31 at the time, right. Um, so he told me, in November, I was due for my yearly checkup. And so if we were pregnant by then, then we would start the process of starting fertility testing, um, which come to find out, I mean, I really think now that I'm in the, this community, my OB was pretty proactive for my age. I agree, hundred percent. Um, and so, and that's how I still am with him. So that's how he is with everything. But, um, so in November, we weren't pregnant yet. So I went to my appointment and we talked about it and he actually set us up for male testing first because he Which said- again is not super common, right? Um, <laughs> so you're nine months into trying to conceive basically at the age of 31 and- Yeah, right. well, and I and actually that November, my birthday is November 5th. So I turned oh, 32. 32. Um, and my husband's only four months younger than me. So he's the same age with me. Um, and so he told me, well, he told me it's cheaper. It's like $500 or something to go get all of the male testing done. So we were going to do that first. So they were six weeks out. So it was in January when my husband went for testing for that. Um, and we got results that we had male factor issues, actually. Um, his sperm count was good, but his shape, which is morphology, was low. And so they referred us to a urologist who's a male fertility specialist. Um, and so my husband made an appointment with the urologist. He said he wasn't worried about, too worried because his count was above 40,000, which is good. Um, but- 40 million, 40 million, I think. I'm sorry, 40 million. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, no, it's all good. <laughs> not for me, I'm in it <laughs> every day. <laughs> Also, I forgot to say his testosterone levels were super low. And the first time they tested him, they were in the hundreds somewhere. But then whenever they tested him again at the urologist's office, he was below a hundred. Right. That and I want to like uh, to address two things. First of all, a lot of docs don't even look at testosterone for males, especially at that age. But then secondarily too, you were, before we started recording, you were sharing that like his big, he was really struggling energy wise, right? Yes, that was his big, I, I said, I wouldn't say it really affected his libido too much, but his energy was awful. I mean, getting out of bed in the morning was hard for him to just wake up and go, you know, like just what we're all used to being able to do. Um, and he was 32 years old. I mean, he should have really had old. tons of energy. Yeah. Yeah. 
and shouldn't be having testosterone issues. No, not really. So, um, so that, that was what we were dealing with, but I also, because of being plugged into Amy's network already in January of 2021, I joined, there's a four week course. Yeah. Um, it was what our group coaching program used to be before we started the FFP, which we just made it more intense, but yeah, it was our four week group coaching program. And we were in the heart of COVID too, weren't we? Yes. I yeah. mean, it was January, 2021. I mean, nobody was, it was still in the, I mean, I, we we're at my office. We were back in the office yet. I don't think we were until six months later, probably. Um, and through that four week course, I felt pulled to do the private coaching. And so I signed up, um, with the group that started in February of 2021, um, so, and I can't remember, you'll have to tell me how many people were in that group, but um, group of girls and then Amy and her team split you up with, so you can have personal coaching. So I was with Michelle, who's no longer with Amy's team, but still very close. Um, and also in February, I went on a ski trip, first mm-hmm. trip, I busted my ACL and it just... I just felt like another hurdle with this fertility thing that came up because they can't do, they won't do an ACL replacement if you have to while you're pregnant. <laughs> so yeah. It's kind of like we did pause for a couple of months because of that. And um, anyway, even though we found the male fertility issues, I insisted on still getting the HSG test to make sure that my tubes and everything were good. And so we, I did do that test in crutches about a week after I did my ACL and mm-hmm. that came good for me. And that was a relief. I mean, a- Amy went back into my notes and saw that I wrote that, you know, for years or for this whole process, I thought for sure it would be me that this was is And then we found out that we have issues on my husband's side. So. Yeah. Yeah. You had uh, said too, of like, um, you know, always in our coaching programs um, still stays the same where we dig into the emotional piece. And, you know, I think it was like one of the first groups where we talked about what do we think is holding us back or what are our fears or limiting beliefs around, it was actually, it's the third group call um, around our fertility challenges. And you had said um, one of her big limiting beliefs was it's all my fault. And then also when she learned about the sperm issues, you felt relief because you were so convinced that it was all your fault and that you were to blame for never being able to have children. Yes. And so to give just a brief background of my family, I mean, I have, I have cousins and sister, my sister and my mother and my mother-in-law have all had losses and major losses. And the first one, I'm getting the chills because it's just so awful still. And it's been 20 years, but yeah. I mean, my, my, one of my cousins, when we were in high school, buried a baby be- because of a loss after being born. So, I mean, in my teens and twenties, I yeah. experienced trauma, close family member trauma around babies <laughs> and have, and being able to get pregnant and stay pregnant or not having issues. So That was a huge thing for me with the coaching that I had actually, and I didn't even touch on it, but been working through with my own therapist with anxiety around all of this, because we had already pinpointed that I have major, I had mental blocks to getting pregnant because of honestly what Michelle and I both Michelle said to me is that it was almost like I was carrying my family's trauma with me. Mm-hmm. There's a term for it. It's it's called uh, transgener- transgenerational trauma. It's like it's real. It's in it's, you know, talked about in therapy all the time. And I think it's really big. And I think we should touch upon like the anxiety piece because um, it's I think it's highly dismissed, if you will, in infertility, just like male factor is, but also this this piece of the emotional trauma and what many women are told, you know, um, Oh, you know, it's just stress or whatever. All you'll, you'll, you know, you'll get through it. You'll get to the other side and the anxiety will go away. 
but I think, and I also think a lot of women are shunned from considering medication or anything like that, or even working with a therapist. And so I don't know, share a little bit about that on your side. Um, yeah. So actually due to the pre, the pelvis, pelvic floor issues I was talking about that happened before we ever started trying, I started seeing a therapist because that caused real medical anxiety for me because I mean, we spent a couple of months going to every type of doctor to make sure that it wasn't something, um, you know, that wasn't something like cancer or, you know, all of these things that can come up in your lower thoracic area. But I mean, I had a CAT scan, I had an MRI, I had, you know, just anyway, so it just caused stuff to snowball with anxiety and Finally, honestly, through doctors, my husband and my family begging me to go see a therapist. I started with a therapist in January of 2020 and talking to her, we did, you know, we started out with two, two sessions a week at first. And she encouraged me to go see a psychiatrist to get on some beds, even for just a little bit. And so we did go off and, um, so I was on Zoloft for a year and three months by the time I got pregnant, um, which I got pregnant in May of 2021 with my 18 month old who's here and a beautiful blonde blue eyed boy is so fun. Um, but anyway, and I was already down to the lowest dose you could possibly take by the time I got pregnant. And actually my doctor, we went ahead and made the decision that I would just maintain with a therapist when I got pregnant, he just said, I really want you to be, if you can do it, let's go ahead and just stop it and see how you do. And, and I did great. And actually I, because of my history with postpartum, I was worried about postpartum anxiety and I didn't have any issues. I maintained with my therapist every month. Amazing. Um, but again, with the meditations and also the tools that I learned with therapy on how to handle anxiety is how I was able to um, process oh. through pregnancy, anxiety afterwards that came up, you know, and yeah, just making cases. Sure that, Go ahead, sorry. All right, just making sure, you know, that I had someone that wasn't just and my husband's great, of course, but you need, in my opinion, as being someone who has gone to therapy, you so you need another voice or someone else to talk to, um, or at least I did. And so just to check in every month to some with someone that's an outside party of my day-to-day life. So hundred yeah. percent. I mean, in cases like yours, because before when you were coaching with us, I didn't yet have Samantha on our team who we now have a licensed psychotherapist um, who specializes in, you know, in trauma specifically on the team, but it was, it was cases like yours that started making me realize like, cause we do a lot of the mindset work, right? We were doing a lot of the belief work and a lot of the stuff that I have in my books, but it kind of hit me one day where I was like, but we're not psychotherapists. And this is significant trauma that, you know, you, you were coming to us with significant trauma already from family history, but then being in your own fertility journey was really, you know, triggering. And I think any, any medical anxiety that came up anyway, cases like yours were what kind of for me kind of sealed it where I was like, I need to bring on someone on the team because, and now our group coaching programs include, you know, work with the psychotherapist too, which, you know, yeah, I'm proud and, of, I'm very proud of because we take, yeah. it, we take the mental health piece, piece really seriously. And then I'll touch briefly. I mean, I did. So when I was with the coaching, you were hundred day at quality diet book wasn't out yet so I yeah you were doing more like body belief but body kind belief. of also like the pdf that I had created which then became the book yeah <laughs> and um and so I do think that was a big factor for me too I don't I really really think the the mental is what we had to get over the hurdle um but you I, did at one point have positive ANAs on one of your tests too I remember that like that was all when you were looking at the pelvic floor stuff, but you had had, you saw like a rheumatologist and you were told 
arthritis, but then you also have these positive ANAs, which for us were like, huh, that's an inflammatory autoimmune thing going on. Is that playing a role in like not letting egg and sperm do their, do their business? Mm -hmm. So I do think you and your husband, he did the diet with you too, right? For the most part. Yes. Oh yeah. I mean, my husband is a phenomenal smoke, smoker and griller, but the inside cooking is me. So yes, he was yeah. eating what I, um, and honestly, I think like I wrote to you that just getting on, just having the guidance to get on the correct vitamins and quality, good quality vitamins. And I use that knowledge, not just gearing up to try to get pregnant, but through my pregnancy and afterwards, I mean, I really leaned on, you have a mommy guide, but yeah. I knew without looking at that, that to build blood because of what you've taught us with Chinese mm -hmm. medicine is I need to do bros and all of that after I have the baby, because I've just lost a bunch of blood and, you know, yeah. just all of that side of it. But and I wanted to touch upon the supplement piece too, because I, I was looking at your, you know, your paperwork that you submitted when we first started working together. And you were on um, uh, Nature's Answer, Be Complex, a one-a-day woman's daily vitamin. And both of those actually had, I think, um, some like not, not some of our favorite ingredients, right? So I remember us switching you over. We had you on the cod liver oil, the spirulina, liver pills. We actually just took you off of prenatal. Is that correct? And just did the spirulina instead? or. Uh Yes, because I did the, oh, the mitochore. That's right. My, because my, because my husband was taking that too. We kind of joined that up. We didn't have to I do remember. it. Yeah. So for your husband, we put him on spirulina, mitochore, cod liver oil, um, for sperm health. And then, um, you were also on the mitochore, the CoQ10 and the calm magnesium powder liver, um, cod liver oil. Yeah. So we made some, and then we did our diagnosis of you was heart and liver blood deficiency in Chinese medicine. So I remember us making recommendations kind of around, around that piece mm -hmm. for you as well. Um, and your red flags at the time, headaches, dry skin, eczema, um, you, you checked off overweight, high libido, hip and back pain, menstrual cramps. And so I guess through, through the diet work, um, I think we increased protein, having you eat with, you know, upon waking, um, you were gluten-free, dairy-free. And so what changes did you see kind of in your, in your body and in your cycle? With so, that? so once, so before ever even diving into the body believer hundred day diet, actually with just the supplement changes and adding protein, my cycle after going off of birth control was 25 or 26 days. And we got it solidly on time every month to 27 days. And my ovulation was like clockwork for the night of 13 and 14, like right there every month. Um, and I only did Uva, which back then that was kind of the only thing out, I think. It was, um, it was the only thing. Um, from February until April of 2021, just to track my cycle, see when I ovulated. The month we got pregnant, which was May 2021, I didn't track actually. I just said, okay, I know I'm ovulating on 13 or 14. We're just going to do it around that. And then also I really focused on the meditations. I meditated for me, and this is how it was even, this is where I liked laboring too, but in my bathtub is just kind of my spot of like, give me 20, 25 minutes. Like that's where I meditate. That's where I do everything. Um, and so I told Michelle, what I told myself every night was, I don't have, I don't owe my family to carry their trauma anymore. And that's yeah. what I said every day, the month we got pregnant. Um, I love that. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, I don't owe them. Or what did I say? I don't owe them my struggle anymore. Yeah. Good for you. You don't. And that's how we change the stories. That's how we change the ancestral trauma. Yeah. And we don't carry it forward. I think that's a beautiful thing too. Like if you get spiritual for just a, spe a second, bear with me of like, I think your son who's now here, 18 months old, you know, coming through, wanted that contract to be broken. You know, like wanted that clarity of like, I don't have to take that on, you know, because my mom has now put it aside. Yeah. I do want to mention, so my grandma, she had, 
dementia and then the, my grandparents got COVID and that's kind of what she died from in April of 2021. So we buried her at the end of April and then we got pregnant right oh. then. And I really think, I mean, I read the book Spirit Babies if, no, if your followers haven't all read that, but yeah. I mean, I just really think like she yeah. helped him come forward for my family. 100%. I told my grandpa that summer, which is his, her husband, that I was pregnant. He just said, this is the best news I've heard all year. I mean, just, you know, so like, sweet. yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway. Yeah, so that spiritual side too played a role a hundred percent, you know, yeah. and also like breaking those bonds. But I also think for you, like, that doesn't have to be my story. I can do it differently. I'm being proactive about this. Um, and I think just be really bringing consciousness to those past traumas and saying like, they don't have to be mine, you know, just because someone else in my family experienced them. Um, they don't have to be mine. And, and I think that's just, it's, it's powerful. Um, I, hmm? I, oh. I said, I, I, I kind of need to go. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to just wrap up real fast. So you had that baby and then do you have two more minutes to give me? I know yes. we started late. Okay. Yeah. Um, you had your son. Amazing. And then you started trying again. How long after? Um, so we decided to try. So my, my son was two, four, so. The first month we were trying, he was 10 months old again. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, this time the mental side was there. Like I knew, I knew we were gonna get pregnant. I knew, I knew I, we weren't constrained to a timeline, right? So, I mean, that's one thing you taught us too, is like, you never know. It took us as long as it did for him. Like, let's just get going. And we got pregnant right away. Um, but unfortunately, we miscarried that pregnancy. And so, um, and it was early five, five weeks or so. Obviously we were so excited. It was sad. Um, I knew with my mental side that, I mean, I plugged in and got my team like all right there, yeah. focused on how to process, saw my therapist again, because I actually had been released, you know, just to only contact her when things happened that I needed to talk to her about kind of thing. Um, and you, you got active again in the group. I remember that too, of like, you came, yeah, back into the groups and we're asking questions. I, you. I asked for Chinese yeah. herbs. Asked how yep, to that's right. We put you on herbs. I remember all that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had, and, and my cycle started right away again. I went to my OB. He said it was like, nobody thinks that you have to wait to try anymore after yeah. it. So go ahead. He is like, this is not your fault. He, he actually, he said, I've had patients that have been on drugs their entire pregnancy and deliver fine. So it's not anything they did like, yeah, you know, so, um, so I had one full cycle, say from period to period in February, and then we got pregnant with this baby in March. Um, yeah, currently 23 weeks pregnant. With, with another, another healthy baby boy <laughs> and he has been measuring the head the whole time which I kind of told my doctor I was like my cycle was so wacky in February after wow. what happened so this is when it was but who knows where the timing is amazing but yeah so I'm due December 5th and everything again my first pregnancy was super easy I think based on the diet and my body. I mean, and this one has been super easy too. I would say maybe I'm more tired this time, but I'm chasing a toddler around. So yes, a hundred percent. Oh, well, Jenna, I know you have to go. I really appreciate your time so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Any, any last words of wisdom to the uh, women out there and then I'll let you hop off. Um, I think just continue to be your advocate and fight and, and, so I, I didn't even mention, I'm, a, I'm an attorney. So research and learning is like, anytime something's important to me, I dive completely in. If that's your personality, I think working with Amy's team is really supportive of that. And she helps teach you how to do that yourself and be your advocate on 
diet, blood work, yeah. anything. So, and if you're not getting what you want, I mean, I fortunately have great support for my doctors, but switch doctors. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Get the hell out. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I agree. Well, I appreciate you so much and good luck with the rest of this pregnancy. Um, keep us posted on everything. Okay. And I know you have to go. You have a busy life too. So I'll let okay. you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.